Zambia Blog Talk Radio. Hello, welcome to Zamia Block Talk Radio. It is another exciting day, the 20th of November 2021. Today we have a very interesting and exciting guest, Mr. Andrew Kamanga, who has an interesting story through his journey as well as his company, Northwestern Energy. Good morning, good afternoon. And good evening, depending upon where you're joining us from. Before I proceed, I would like to say hello to my co-host, Uncle Nathan, joining us Hi, from Texas. Hi, Tessuluba. <laughs> Hi, Uncle Nathan. How are you? Good. How's Lusaka today? That's the weather Lusaka. like today. They are raining. Lusaka is it's good. It, it rained a bit somewhere in the afternoon, but now it's mm -hmm. just raining, but it's not raining. Okay. Yeah, but it, yes. Excellent. I'm looking yeah. forward to this discussion with Mr. Kamanga. Interesting story, right? Very interesting, actually. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's going to be great. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm glad you are part of the team. You're going to make life easier for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. <laughs> After carrying this burden for so many years by myself, <laughs> right? Well, Yes, we're looking forward to having the honorable yeah. Mr. Mashonga to carry the show. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I'm, I'm so excited and, and eager to taking over the mantle. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Good evening. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Kamanga. <laughs> How are you? Sorry, my, my light is uh, not good enough. Uh, it's not uh, meant for studio lighting, so... <laughs> Just bear with me. <laughs> I think it looks okay, Kasulova, right? It looks just center yourself. Yes, right okay. there where you are. That's better. Exactly. All right. <laughs> okay, he's going to come back. Well, at least he's here. At least he's here. <laughs> mm. Mm. Hi, Roger. These, the, the, the Canadians, Kasulova, are so excited about the little soccer games that they are winning in the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, Kasulova, all yours. <laughs> so, um, we are super excited to host none other than Mr. Andrew Kamanga. He is not... Uh, a stranger to many Zambians and even the world. He's uh, he's renowned, a renowned businessman, and um, also passionate about soccer. Um, I have followed. I I have followed Mr. Kamanga's story for quite some time, and it's really been fascinating and interesting. Mr. Kamanga, can you hear us? Yes, I'm just adjusting my volume. I can hear you now. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah. it's better now. Okay. Mr. Kamanga's story spans from... Um, he, he, he comes from the central province. Mm -hmm. Eastern. He, <laughs> Eastern <laughs> province, sorry. He comes, <laughs> he comes from Eastern province. Thanks for the correction. He did his education. We'll start from mostly his tertiary education because that's where the journey of even forming Northwestern Energy actually begins from. So he went to Unzando by then, which is um, the University of Zambia Ndola Campus, which is now called the Copperbelt University. 
So, Mr. Kamanga, we went to the same institution, only that you went to Unzando, I went to Copper Belt University. <laughs> but uh, we, we graduated at CBU. Oh, you graduated at CBU? Yes. Because, so did you start uh, at Unzando? The change was done in 1988 by KK. So okay. we, we graduated in 1990. Ah, but... Because, but then you started as Unzando, right? Because you went there, should have yes. been 19. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, great. Awesome. <laughs> so, um, he pursued uh, a degree in accountancy from the Corporate University. From there, proceeded to the UK in England um, at London City University, where he continued with his studies in management, accounting. After Mr. Kamanga finished that, he then later on pursued an MSc in energy and... Kasulova, we can't hear you. Yeah, he's gone off. Hello, can you hear me now? The last thing we had was masters in energy. Ah, sorry, okay. Yes. So after he pursued his studies at the London City University in England um, in management accounting, Mr. Kamanga went on to pursue an MSc in um, energy and environmental technology and economics. So from there, we can see to say the passion was there to pursue energy in itself. Mm -hmm. When fr from there he came back to Zambia, began his career. He joined Price Waterhouse uh, Coopers, which is one of the top accounting firms in Zambia as well as globally. In about 1991, correct me if I'm wrong with the years, Mr. Kamala. No, you are right. Yes. After that, he joined. Is it Meridian BIO Bank for a yes, short stint in 1994? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Then after that, Mr. Kamanga decided to go back in practice because in the accounting, in the, in the accountancy world, practice is usually referred is, is, is usually referred to when you're working for these auditing firms being Price Waterhouse, uh, KPMG, and the likes. So in 1994, Mr. Kamanga went back into practice. I presume it was audit, which was KPMG this time around. It was consultancy now. I'd already done audit. Oh, it was now consultancy. Ah, wow. Yes. So then now he was he had the eye for making money, more money. <laughs> <laughs> so after after Mr. Kamanga went back to KPMG as a consultant, he left. Then in approximately 1996, in 1996, he joined an electrical engineering firm called Asia Brown uh, Boveri. Mm. So he already had an interest in energy. We can see how it is building up. Then mm. he had a short stint with um, that company in 1998. Mr. Kamanga joined the newly then um, created um, Zambia Energy Regulation Board. Because of his vast experience and educational qualifications, he became the head of economic regulation, which was, I believe, a very big post and, and a big leap. From there, Mr. Kamanga joined um, left. Then he established a company, which will also be a basis for discussion as we go on, which was called ENFIN. Maybe he will tell us what it was all about and, and, and the, the full initials, which was an energy and financial advisory firm. So for me there, what's intriguing is how we can combine energy and financial advisory. So Uncle Nathan, please take note. Uh, Mr. Kawanga will be able to clarify that for us. Then in all 2007, right. <laughs> then in 2007, Mr. Kamanga then founded now the company of discussion, Northwestern Energy, a private utility company involved um, in um, distribution of electricity to Lumwana Mine, parts of Solwezi, Kalumbila Mine, 
including many maybe many other companies that he he will be able to tell us and what they are about so to our um our viewers or listeners that's the profile of the man that we have today mr andrew kamanga welcome once once again sir i hope thank you I very have much said it correctly no you have but uh i think uh we can uh, get into the nitty gritty of uh, the uh -huh. discussion because obviously we shouldn't spend too much time on the background, but it's also important that uh, people get to know where we are coming from. Unfortunately, I've lost my identity because a lot of people tend to think that I'm uh, into football, but football, <laughs> as you would expect, is really a small component of what I do. And uh, my position as uh, president of FAS can be likened to a board chairman. So that is okay. why I don't spend uh, time at FAS. Mm -hmm. I only go there once a month when there's a meeting. But of course, when the team loses, uh, everybody is looking for me. So that's a topic <laughs> for another day. <laughs> that's the nature of the business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK. So, so I'm getting... uh, ready when you are. I think, uh, first okay. of all, I'd like to thank you for the invitation. And I hope that uh, my story will motivate uh, fellow Zambians to mm -hmm. be able to look at uh, how, you can, how you can build different businesses from uh, scratch. So I'm more than happy to share my experiences. That's true. That's true. Definitely. Um, I'm already inspired just by following you and reading through your profile, for example, so I can't wait for us to get into the nitty gritties. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll go before you, Uncle Nathan. The first que question I would have uh, for you, Mr. Kamanga, is what prompted you to study energy? Looking at um, your field, especially what you pursued at undergrad, and how you decided to go into energy um, with economics, what were you looking at? Especially that now energy has become so important at this mm -hmm. point, even way more than it was then. Yeah, first of all, you need to understand that uh, the reason why we all go to university, especially for the first uh, degree. Mm -hmm. I think uh, university is just to give you a platform or maybe to use it differently. It's an opportunity for you to be taught how to think. So once you've had that first degree, you can then now go and explore what the world has to offer. So in my case, I started out uh, by uh, doing a degree in accounting, mm -hmm. because uh, that was always my passion from uh, even secondary school. I think um, I got a distinction in mathematics at my all levels, I had a distinction in accounts, I had a distinction in commerce. So I was wow. always tuned to take that path. I obviously wasn't a science student, but I think this is where, as I was saying, you think that you are running away from sciences and then eventually you find it uh, much, much further along the way. Mm. So having uh, that yeah. accounting background was good enough to set me up. And uh, with the experience I had, I had my practice, became a chartered accountant. And now, unfortunately, I went into energy, if you'd like, by accident. Because uh, the time I left uh, KPMG, I was uh, recruited as a financial controller for ABB, which at the time was uh, the biggest electrical engineering company in the world. And uh, I was in charge of uh, the finances. So I had to now learn the business because ABB was instrumental in uh, building power lines, which mm -hmm. are your transmission lines as well as uh, substations for Zesco. So it's from that background that uh, my interest in uh, the power sector started. So you can imagine I'm an accountant, but I have to learn mm -hmm. about uh, 
the power sector. I have to learn about the transmission lines. I have to learn about the substation. I need to learn about the transformer, auto relays. So you suddenly find that you are dealing with engineers, but mostly from uh, uh, a finance perspective. Mm -hmm. And then uh, beyond that, my next step mm -hmm. was uh, when uh, the government took a decision to reform the energy sector and created the energy regulation board. So I was taken in to go and uh, be the head of economic regulation. And in that portfolio, I was now responsible for regulating Zesco and all the other power companies. And on the petroleum side, if you recall, in the 90s, we used to have a company called Zambia National Oil Company, which was uh, responsible for buying fuel. And I was then in charge of uh, setting the prices of fuel mm. for the oil marketing industry. So suddenly I, find, I found myself dealing with power and also the oil industry. Mm. And then uh, it was from my time in ERB that I realized that uh, there was a big gap on the consultant side. And I think when my contract uh, came to an end in 2001, I opted now to take a risk and uh, set up as a consultant in uh, energy and finance. And I think on the finance side, I just specialized in uh, taxation. And on the energy side, I was looking at the power sector as well as the oil sector and the renewable energy. And to supplement my stay in the energy sector, I think that's how I ended up studying for a Master of Science degree in uh, Energy, Environment, Technology, and Economics. So having taken that full circle, mm -hmm. I now found myself going back to, if you like, engineering as it were. So I am an accountant, but I'm currently running a power distribution company. So mm -hmm. this is where now all the skills I've had in the past have obviously seen me through what I'm doing today. And uh, I set up uh, Northwestern Energy purely by chance because uh, I was advising Lumana when they were coming in as an investment advisor. And then I took them through the process of uh, negotiating their power supply agreements with Zesco. Okay. And from there, they now asked me if I could help out with uh, managing the distribution for the township. Okay. So the first part was to involve ourselves with uh, housing. And then we extended our network to the commercial side. And then from there, we expanded into Solwezi through first quantum at Kansanshi Mine when they set up the housing estate at Kabitaka. And then when Kalundila was set up, we went and replicated the same model in uh, Kalundila. So currently as Northwestern Energy, we are operating in Solwezi, Lumana, and Kalundila. And going forward, I think uh, we are still looking for more opportunities where we can continue with what we do. So basically, as mm. Northwestern Energy Corporation, we've invested in uh, 33 kV lines, and we've also got our own substations, which are 33 to 10 kV, oh, sorry, 11 kV. And we've also got 11 kV network, and we take that into the 400 uh, volts. And then in the houses, we've put in the prepaid uh, meters. So we are not, for lack of a better way, the middleman as everyone would uh, like to believe, but we've invested mm. in the hard infrastructure, which takes power from the Zesco takeoff point into the houses. So okay. it is quite an exciting environment to be in. And uh, we do have uh, electrical engineers who run all the sites because once you've set up uh, the facility or the network, the only thing you worry about is uh, maintenance. Mm. So this is where we are. And in summary, okay. this gives a flavor of 
where I've come from and how I've ended up where I am. Well said, Mr. Kamanga. And you see, you have already gone into that technical language, which scares <laughs> a lot of us, okay? The I'll idea, keep it simple. <laughs> the idea and the purpose is for our listening audience to understand the opportunities available in the energy sector because you know this very well. For us Zambians, when you're talking about investment and all these things, we are used to trading, building houses, and yet there are great opportunities in areas like energy sector. So what are the areas or categories that the energy sector one can venture into? What are the opportunities available in the energy sector? Very well. So as I said, if you look at my background, I've mm. been in the sector for the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. Now, what is exciting is uh, we need a lot of policy intervention from the government. Okay. And uh, I'll give you a simple example. There's talk of uh, Zesco being uh, unbundled and uh, depending on... Uh, do do the, you agree with that? Of course, uh, I, 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 I'll, I'll explain it differently. I won't okay. go for the, the unbundling. I would rather use the word market reorganization. I like Because that. all you want to do is that uh, the power sector should always be looked at like any other sector. As mm -hmm. you said, even the guy who's selling um, talk time for Airtel and MTN yes. should not be any different when you reverse it to the power sector. And this is mm -hmm. why I think we need to deeply define the power sector, that it's not as complicated as it should be. Mm -hmm. If we just focus on the market. Now, when we talk about the market, it means that electricity should be looked at as a product, okay. which is first of all generated. It's then transported. It's then consumed. Now, the process of generating, transporting, and consumption, today as we speak, all those functions are being performed by Zesco yes. because Zesco generates, they transmit and distribute to you and I. Now, if you take the three elements mm -hmm. and say, okay, if we just say, let's have a market for generation, <laughs> we can then have one person performing the task of transmission mm. and then we can have several people now involved in distribution so if we take that view it means that we can now look at the tail end of the the process and say can we use distribution as a tool for mm. economic first of all development and secondly, economic empowerment, because at the end of it all, we should be able to sell electricity like the way talk time is uh, sold. Yes. Now, to do that, it means that we need to create several distribution companies who can then take the risk and then be able to take the power right up to the consumers. And I think this is what has always been the elephant in the room. Mm. So in my personal view, and speaking as uh, uh, an advisor in the sector, I expect that government will now say Zesco can concentrate on generation. Mm -hmm. They can also be involved in transmission because those two are quite complicated. And as I gave you an example of ourselves, we are in distribution. Okay. But at the end of it all, we are buying the power from Zesco and then transmitting it and then selling it to the end users. So we are the only 
private distribution company. But our model can now prove that we can have as many Zambians getting involved in distribution because we've proved that this business can be viable. Of course, it's not the sort of business where you are going to put in money today, get a return tomorrow. You may have to wait a little bit longer. And uh, the advantage we have now is uh, that government can now say, we've got 10 provinces. Can we create distribution companies in all the 10 provinces? If you've been uh, in Zambia longer, for those who are old, like myself, who are over 50, <laughs> if we go back, councils used to be responsible for selling ele electricity. Mm. But at some point, all these were combined and they put all the functions into Zesco. Into Zesco. So this is why going forward now, it's possible that that role of distribution can be given to the locals. And our model speaks to that possibility. It's not okay. complicated. Mm. It's something that can be looked at. And it is a viable market that uh, is there because all these models have worked elsewhere. That's and I right. think this is why it's possible that distribution can be parceled out to the citizens. Because for instance, when we talk about um, um, local economic empowerment, mm -hmm. we tend to scratch on the surface and deal with little bits. I know we've got the citizens' economic empowerment, but I think we are giving too much respect to foreign investors as opposed mm. to supporting ourselves. That's right. Because if government could carefully and strategically parcel out distribution, we will suddenly create a lot of local, private, Zambian, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who will run the private sector of electricity. Okay. You mentioned this. Let me ask one more question and I'll allow Kasuluga and my colleague Roger to come in. You use the terminology policy intervention because the objective of this discussion is to dispel the myth and the, the, you know, the fear that we have about the energy sector. You talked about policy interventions. What provisions are in the Energy Act for investment opportunities? Well, right now, the Electricity Act, as well as uh, the Energy Regulation Act, mm -hmm. have openly said they will allow private sector participation. But as I said, generation requires yes. huge amounts of investment, which you and I will take longer to to, to put in. When we look at transmission, it also requires huge amounts of investment. But the easy and low-hanging fruit is distribution, which, of course, needs to be addressed in a policy. And that can work if we allow... Please bear with me one second. I think my dog is making too much noise. Let me just... <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> it's all right okay all right uh, everybody listening yeah yeah <laughs> thank you Kasulova, for that introduction now, you <laughs> see what i want us to do here chairman uh, Kasulova, uh, is that you know we we have these myths about certain sectors of the economy it's yes. like it's a no-go area you know what i'm trying to yes. say Yes. So let's debunk that. Chairman, if you've seen the way I'm seated, I even want to jump high. <laughs> and the, yeah, Look, Mr. Kamanga has so come. That's yeah, okay. So, as I was saying, mm -hmm. the, the, there's enough um, uh, policy formulation, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. enough legislation, but the challenge that we have is the will or political will 
to make that happen. Mm. So this is where now everything else is ready, but we need the politicians to now say, you know what? We are taking this direction and this is where we should go. And this, in my view, is going to be useful because we are going to create a lot of Zambian entrepreneurs who will be able to take a risk, borrow money, pay mm. back, and run the business as it is. In fact, uh, one of the assignments I did in uh, 2009, I was hired by the Sadiq Banking Association yes. to create a policy framework and legal framework under the Ministry of Works at uh, that time where we needed to come up with a public-private partnership act. And I think the, the act was passed in 2010. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've heard in the current uh, government's uh, proposal, they are talking about uh, upgrading or up, e e changing the act so that uh, we are able to see more transactions. So if we go back to the power sector, yes. it's very easy to now say Zesco can give out all these um, distribution opportunities on a concession basis using the PPP Act. So the legislation the policies are already there, but all it requires is uh, the politicians to now say, yes, can we go to implementation? We've got everything ready. Let's go to implementation. And personally, I'm more than happy and ready to help in that process because I'll be coming from an informed position and will be mm. happy to share our experiences so that you can have as many Zambians do what we are doing. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Roger? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Kamanga, welcome. My name is Roger in Canada here. Uh, I was telling my friends when you left that I almost wanted to jump of the things you are you are talking about here, and uh, for one reason, um, number one, uh, this network we have formed with you today is just a start. We probably going to get in touch with you, uh, maybe be on our advisory board um, to advise us. What we are looking at is um, buying, uh, uh, constructing uh, a solar plant. And you mentioned the, uh, you mentioned the uh, Northwestern, where I come from, by the way. Okay. Uh, meaning you are going to be our first customer, in short. <laughs> um, Very possible. <laughs> you, you, see, you see where I'm going, Mr. Kamanga? Yes. Um, wh what we are working on uh, is we have created uh, um, uh, a cooperative here in the diaspora, which will bring a lot of people. Uh, not to tell the world what we are doing is to have um, a diaspora bond, which will raise quite a bit of uh, cash to help us. I also have uh, networks. The president came, uh, was in London telling us he shouldn't be coming here. We, we, are, we live with people who have got money. I've got a, a lawyer friend of mine who leads um, South Africa, uh, a lawyer, he, he, trade missions with very people with established uh, cash who could partner with, with us so you hear where i'm coming from i'm not asking you a question i'm just introducing to you that we need to talk that, that, that's my point i end there whatever you have said you've really i don't know if i was a preacher i would have said you, you i don't i don't know <laughs> no yeah I, I i'm so happy that um First of all, you are organizing yourselves in the diaspora. Uh, I've been fortunate in the time that I've been involved in uh, advisory. I think um, I've been involved as a consultant to almost all the mining companies uh, from around uh, 2000, when I set up as a consultant in the energy sector. Mm -hmm. And I've been to Canada several times because at the time uh, we were working for the Lumana mine, they were listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange and uh, we had to come into Canada to raise money. We also went into America 
because uh, the Lumana project was uh, a one billion dollar investment, and uh, it obviously required uh, capital from uh, from there. Now, the biggest issue for me is that we do have opportunities here, and I'm excited that you are talking about uh, a diaspora bond. Perfect. Because you see, the biggest problem we have as Zambians is mm -hmm. that uh, I think we, we always go for the, for the simple uh, business uh, deals. Pottery, pottery chicken. You, you and I, <laughs> you, we are going to work as professionals. When our time comes to an end, you start looking at chickens. Meanwhile, you've got your professional expertise, even yes. in football. I've been telling uh, my colleagues that uh, we need to make FAS financially independent. And we are actually in the process of uh, raising its Polo Polo bond. But to a soccer fan on the street, whatever I'm saying doesn't make sense. But you see, we need to have sustainable investment. And this is what will make a difference. Mm -hmm. Because, as I said, I've been advising almost all the big uh, mining investors. There's really nothing that I cannot do. Today, if I have a mining concession, I can jump on the plane and come to the Toronto Stock Exchange and raise capital from there. Because there, they are not interested in where you are coming from. The investors are only interested in where can I put my money? Where will I get a return? People mm. will sit. The stock exchange in um, in Toronto is only looking at the projects which are bringing money. And I think this is where I may digress a little bit here, but uh, it's so important that this point is appreciated. Having been an investment advisor to the mining firms, we've had a situation where when uh, Lumana was coming up, yes. I persuaded the government through the um, uh, ZCCMIH that, look, this is a greenfield uh, operation. Can you invest in uh, Equinox, which was uh, listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange? At this time, the first time we had the conversation, they needed to put in, they could have put in five million dollars for 20 percent equity okay that didn't happen one year later we were back to the discussion table and the share price had moved and this time equinox were saying look we can give you 20 percent for 15 million dollars now no decision was made Nine months later, ZCCM were now ready to sign off. Meanwhile, the share price on the Toronto Stock Exchange yeah. kept going up. Going up. Mm -hmm. So by the time we were now doing the, the deal, the share price had moved and government or ZCCMIH had to pay $30 million for four and a half percent shares. Now you see the way this thing is changing. Yeah. And then, as fact would have it, when the mine was now sold by Equinox to to Barrick, who are the current uh, owners, I think they sold it for over seven billion. But ZCCMIH yes. walked away with something like a hundred and ninety million. Because it was four and a half percent of the seven billion. Now think about it. If we had only paid five million dollars and secured twenty percent, would have on the transaction of uh, the change of ownership, ZCCM would have ended up with one billion dollars. These are the things we need to sort out. Wow. So wow. that is a missed opportunity. Yes. And then added to uh, that. Here is another element, which I'm even happy, which you need to think about as uh, the diaspora, 
because it's so easy to raise money from there. We need to try and persuade government that they don't need to invest in the operating mines in Zambia. They need to invest in the investment companies which are listed outside because that's where the dividend is paid. So even now, I don't see why government should invest in Kalumbila. They need to invest in FQM, which is listed in Toronto. That is what we need to sort out. Well, very, very interesting. I'm, I'm here like Uncle Roger almost jumping as well. And, and, and Uncle Roger, actually, um, even as you think about all that, you will send me to meet uh, Mr. Kamanga because there's definitely lots of uh, <laughs> knowledge that uh, we can we can actually uh, acquire. Um, now, I, I think for me, I'll be speaking on behalf of the, the younger generation, maybe 30 and below, because Zambia, this is the agenda that Zambia needs to, to drive and to push. Um, the barriers to entry in the energy sector are quite high, like you have made mention. It's um, it, it requires lots of capital and um, all these procedures and processes. What do you think, Mr. Kamanga, could be done by young by, by young people like myself, those and, and also those that are freshly coming maybe out of university or have worked for some time, even before looking at what the government should mm. do what do you think we can do in order that we um capture some opportunities that are in the energy sector yeah i'll answer this with a bit of uh, background you see mm. i don't uh, agree that um, before you start a business you need to have the capital it's actually the opposite because you need to have the idea first, then capital is secondary. That, I think, is always uh, misunderstood. Because if you speak to an average Zambian, what are you going to do? Oh, no, first I need to have the money, then I can start the business. It doesn't work uh -huh. that way. It's the opposite. You need to have the idea first. Mm -hmm. And then once you have the idea, then you can navigate around how you deal with the issue of uh, capital. capital. Now, I'll give you a practical example. Um, when uh, we started uh, Northwestern, um, we did all the paperwork. And then uh, we needed to raise uh, $5 million. So wow. we went around, we couldn't get that kind of money. But fortunately, there was a development bank in uh, Holland. It's called the uh, mm -hmm. FMO. They were also funding the, the mine development. So we had a conversation with them. And uh, they, they liked the idea. They were in love with the concept. And then they said, fine, we are happy to give you um, the five million dollars you are looking for, but for us to be able to give you five million dollars, mm -hmm. you need to raise your own one million dollars. Now, obviously, in our market, it's not easy to raise a million dollars, not at all. But what we then had to do was uh, to now go to the local banks. I think uh, Standard Chartered Bank gave us uh, $300,000. Uh, Finance Bank gave us uh, 700000 At the end of it all, oh, we were able to pay back the $1 million and we were able to secure the $5 million over an eight-year period. So what I'm saying is the idea is number one. Mm -hmm. Capital is number two. Even now, where I've reached, and I think this is why uh, I've said uh, in my, my retirement, I want to spend more time sharing my experiences so that we can get as many of our young people. Because you see, ideas are ideas. 
when we talk about uh, capital, this is an area where we can now say, how do we create venture capital funds to be able to support those who've got ideas? So yes. it needs to be working both ways. So we should not shy away, even as young people. What you need to do is have an idea, convince everybody. When you run into a, a tunnel where you now need capital, then you can come and talk to me. I'll do it for you for free. <laughs> wow. All awesome. Right. <laughs> Let's read this question from, uh, from Facebook from uh, Dr. Monsanje. This is interesting because I, I was actually wanted to ask you to discuss or address the issue of uh, solar energy. Dr. Okay. Monsanje says, do you think we can use solar energy to improve power output and end load shedding in Zambia? Yes, we can. We need to look at solar from uh, two perspectives. Mm -hmm. Now, solar should be looked at as a development uh, uh, project because one, the equipment is very expensive. So mm -hmm. if you are to set up a solar uh, farm, it's very easy. You can produce your power. But yes. if you are going to now take it into the market and sell, as I said, you now start having the challenge of the production cost and the price at which you can sell it. So this is why it, it all sits in this conversation around uh, an economic tariff. Because obviously as a business, you can't produce at uh, five cents and mm -hmm. then go and sell at uh, two and a half cents because the distribution tariff is regulated by ERB, even yes. ourselves. The price which we charge the domestic customers is the same that uh, everyone else is paying in Zesco. We only survive because our model has got a little bit of commercial and industrial customers in there. And I okay. think that's where we've got the leverage to now make a little bit uh, more markup. But going forward, we need government to sort this issue of what should be the end, end user tariff. And mm -hmm. I think this is a conversation. If we sort out the distribution from a policy point of view, mm -hmm. we should then be able to allow the market to determine what price it should be. If that happens, it means anybody who's got an opportunity to invest in solar will be able to produce their power and take it into the market and still make a markup. So this is a conversation which has to happen. Mm -hmm. And the advantage with uh, solar is that it's what we call in technical terms an off-grid system yes. because it's not connected to the Zesco network. So you could have a solar plant which is just feeding a community. And in that regard, you don't need to be connected to the Zesco network. Mm. So if you wanted from an economic uh, development point of view to, ha to increase uh, access of electricity, government should deliberately allow as many solar projects to go and be on the off-grid system. So these are things which can still be looked at, but it still comes back to government ensuring that there is an economic tariff which will allow an investor in solar to be able to make their investment worthwhile. Wow. Okay, so, what are the challenges? Yeah, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Solar <laughs> is uh, the way to go, but uh, we need to be mindful that it's expensive and if you are going to use it for investment, you should also be able to get a return. So it's something that needs to be addressed in the policy structure by the government. Okay, another quick question on social media as we conclude that we've run out of time. I don't oh. know how briefly you can answer this. What are the challenges of Zambia turning to geothermal energy or why hasn't, why hasn't this been explored in Zambia? I'm very, very happy that uh, 
somebody is raising that question. And I know for a fact, this is the problem we've had because as a country, 25 mm. years or in the last uh, 50 years, if you look at uh, post-independence, we've all been conditioned yes. that power can only come from hydro. We were just talking about solar. That is one option. Now, we need to have a power generation mix. And you see, you can have power from hydro, yes, solar, mm -hmm. yes, geothermal, yes, wind, yes. So there's so many, even gas, we can have coal. We do have uh, the Mamba project, which is uh, up and running. Mm -hmm. So what we need in terms of uh, ensuring that we have security of supply, we should have a diverse range of generation options. So I'm very, very happy that somebody has mentioned geothermal. Because if you look at where we are today, yes, our generation of power from geothermal is zero. Oh, wow. Look at uh, Kenya. They are generating 600 megawatts from geothermal. But not all is lost because, as you would expect, the process to get to power generation using geothermal, it's pretty mm. much like what you have in mining. You okay. have to go through exploration, you have to do your drilling, and you have to get your resource estimation. You have to now go to the market, raise the money, generate the power, and then be able to sell it. So mm. as we speak, I know of uh, a company called uh, Kalahari Geothermal. They are actively involved in uh, Southern Province where they are exploring. And uh, I'm quite confident they will very soon be the first uh, company to produce uh, power from uh, geothermal. Now, my view, again, it's a government policy. When we talk about generation, just imagine i'm happy you've got the map of zambia there <laughs> maybe you can move a little bit to to the right or my right this way where you've got uh, yes just move to madagascar side ah uh, if you can just shift that way i want to use that map yeah <laughs> yeah uh -huh. now i'm happy so it's almost like uh, i'm giving a lecture now if you see where zambia is where we've got uh, the A in the Zambia, the last letter yes, A. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Imagine we just draw a line there. Yeah. So we cut the country into two. So mm -hmm. you've got the two quadrants. And then mm -hmm. I draw another line across. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have four quadrants. Yes. Mm -hmm. And... If you look at our current setup of the energy sector or power sector, we do have generation at the bottom, which is um, in Kariba and uh, Kafue, sitting at the bottom. It's close on the Zimbabwean side. Yes. So we are generating power in the southern part of the country, and we are taking it to the copper belt as well as uh, the northern part using a huge transmission network. Now, if we wanted to diversify our generation, we can use gas as generation of power. And why do I say so? If we go to the top, where we are seeing Tanzania there, mm -hmm. at the bottom of uh, Tanzania, where we share the border there, in Tanzania, they've actually got uh, power which is generated using gas. So we can actually build a gas pipeline, pipeline. Mm -hmm. from uh, the bottom part of uh, Tanzania into Nakonde. We can set up a, um, 
a gas-fired plant in Nakonde there. That's number one. If we come to the bottom, I'm happy you've given me a better map. Where you have Mozambique mm -hmm. and Eastern Province, you've got a place called uh, uh, Tete in Mozambique, which is almost 100 kilometers into our Katete in the, in the Eastern Province. Even there, we've got coal and gas. So we could easily have generation in the eastern province. So mm. we've done northern, eastern, southern. As I said, you can draw a bit of gas out of uh, Namibia because Namibia, they've got uh, what they call uh, the Kudu project, which is gas fired. We can bring gas into the southern part or western part and still have generation there. Where you have Angola, we can mm -hmm. put another gas fired. So what I'm saying is, looking into the future, we can now have electricity generated from gas, and we've sorted out the four points where we can do it. If I was Minister of Energy, these are the things I would now be driving as the future of Zambia for the next 50 years. Because then we can even forget about what happens with hydro and the load shedding. So we mm. need to think about other options. Geothermal, we can allow exploration. Coal-fired, even in the northern part, the Tanzania part, we do have a lot of coal on the northern part of Zambia. In Tanzania, they do have uh, power generated from uh, coal fields. The same in Malawi, we, which, which we share the border in that Muchinga province. So we need to be very strategic about the resources we want to use. But we've mm. always found ourselves operating in a closed box where we say power can only be generated using hydro. So I, mm. I, I hope I've given a better perspective to the question around uh, geothermal. Geothermal, yeah. Very broad. We conclude here. We've run out of time. Let me just ask this final question as we end here. We are... I hope you can answer this under one minute. What okay. internship, what internship programs, attachments, like if we want to send the team to Northwestern Energy to come and see how things are done, uh, what 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 provisions or availability is that program at your at your company? It's very open. We do take in uh, students mm -hmm. from uh, CBU. Even uh, University of Zambia, those who are doing the internship, we've done it so many times. But we are very, very open to share with you what we are doing. We're not a very big company. We are still small, but uh, growing. We've got ambitions mm. to also look at uh, possibilities of expanding the company away from distribution so that we can also secure our interest in generation. So we are more than uh, happy to welcome you. Excellent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was our show today. We're looking at the energy sector in Zambia to try and demystify the fear and, you know, <laughs> that we have about this so that we run away, Roger Kasuluba, from just doing chickens and building <laughs> houses. We yeah. also get into... I hope this was helpful to everybody listening. We shall be talking to Mr. Kamanga more frequently. Sorry, people, this wasn't about football. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> we we can also have another session on uh, capital raising because uh, those are things yeah. I do all the time. Okay. Whether you are looking for a million dollars, whether you are looking for hundred million, whether you are looking for a billion, so we can have that conversation on its own as. Uh, a subject for, for discussion so that the young people, for, for, like, for people uh, like who got projects, yes. we can support them how to do it. Yeah. For people yeah. like me, definitely. Uncle Nathan. <laughs> yeah. That's what, that's what we are talking about. I'll be well, meeting with Mr. Kamanga very soon. Mr. Kamanga, yeah. anytime you're yes. welcome. Just yeah, you get go. in touch and we'll have a chat. Definitely. Thank you, everybody. Join us next weekend as we speak to women in mining. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Wakamanga. Thank you.
Enjoy. Zambia Blog Talk Radio.